Um, hello, hello, hello. So I just um, heated up this quick and easy um, shepherd lentil. It's a lentil shepherd's pie and some vegan mac and cheese meal prep. Um, I'm not doing dinner tonight. <laughs> um, I'm getting used to exercising now that I've done it for like a week now. I've only done three classes now. Um, but I'm going to have a week off from the gym because um, the gym is closed um, until next week. Um, so they're closed because of the, uh, the county fair. And since the gym is right next to the fairgrounds, they have to close during the fair. Um, so maybe next week I might go to the fair. It depends on if it's free. Um, I don't want to go to the fair if it's not free because, um, I probably want to spend money at the fair. I don't, I don't know if I'm even going to go to the fair, though. We'll see how much money I have and stuff. All right, so let's see what's new on the, uh, the YouTube. <coughs> Emerlyn Reed's taking a break. I saw the last video. Um, I didn't really have much to think about it. Um, living in a world that dislikes fat people. Um, there is a reason to dislike fat people, but I I don't personally dislike fat people. Um, the only thing I dislike about fat people is um, the never ending excuses. like. That's something that I think we all can be guilty of being the heavier set girls out there because um, we just make up excuses as to why we are not getting out there and doing it. But some excuses can be totally valid, like, you know, being on your period or busting an ankle or all sorts of things. But some excuses are not valid, and a lot of us make a lot of excuses that we really shouldn't be making. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. Anything new that I should be interested in? Everybody's reacting to Lizzo right now. Hmm. I want something good. Give me something good. Let's check this out. Dr. Jen Cowdle. Butter versus margarine. What's healthier? Let's see what she has to say about this. Guys, I think you're going to need a pencil and paper for this video. I'm going to give you a list of the healthiest yeah, some oils. Earl Grey tea with, with my new maple syrup. Right. These oils have uh, more of the good fat, less of the bad fat, okay? But I'm also going to tell you the unhealthiest oils to cook with, the ones you need to stay away from with regards to your cholesterol, etc. I'm also going to sort of settle the butter versus margarine debate. Which one is healthiest? Which one should you cook with? Which is going to be best for your cholesterol? That's not my new teacup too. Let's start, okay? We got a lot to talk about. Let's just jump right into the list of the healthiest oils to cook with, okay? These oils have more of the good fats, less of the saturated Dr. fats. Dr. Jen Coddle. Have, um, and tend to be better Magic for machines. you if you have to cook Still with oil. Too hot if you don't have to cook with cool. oil, don't cook with oil. But if you do, uh, these are some, some better ones. Number one, canola oil, okay? Number two, corn oil. 
makes me happy coming from the state of Iowa and I love corn. <laughs> Number I three, use a lot of canola no, oil. No particular order, by the way. Number three is olive oil. That probably does not surprise you though. Number four is peanut oil. My mom actually was just asking about that one uh, this morning. Number five is safflower oil. S-A-F-F-L-O-W-R -E oil. Uh, the next one is this. soybean oil. Mm -hmm. And the next one is sunflower oil. Again, in no particular order. Those are some great ones. Now, there are a few others I wanted to mention. By the way, the source for everything in this video comes from the American Heart Association. All of this information is courtesy of heart.org. Their website is so awesome and where all this information is coming from. Now, there's also some other good ones, but they can be a little bit expensive or maybe harder to find, but I did want to mention them. That's avocado oil. That's a good one. Grapeseed oil rice bran oil, and sesame oil, okay? Those are also better oils than some of the ones that are not so great, okay? Um, also, in general, you can use like a vegetable oil, okay? Like if it just says vegetable oil, okay, that tends to be a better option. You can also use uh, many of the cooking sprays that are made from the oils, many of the oils I just mentioned. So that's something I use when cooking as I tend to use the cooking spray. That's how I like to cook, okay? Um, according to the American Heart Association, you want to choose an oil that ideally has less than four grams of saturated fat per tablespoon. You should be able to look on the bottle and get an idea of how much saturated fat. Uh, so less than four grams per tablespoon. You don't want oils with partially hydrogenated oils or trans fats. That's super important, okay? Now, when it comes to oils that you <sighs> don't just... want to use, okay? And then we're gonna go to the butter versus margarine debate. Very good. Oils that you do not wanna use, that I do not want you to use because they tend to have um, more of the bad fats and fats that can sort of increase your cholesterol and things like that. You wanna stay away from palm oil or palm kernel oil. You also want to stay away from coconut oil. We call these tropical oils, okay? Mm. Um, it's I really, use, really important that you keep this in mind, guys. I use a lot of coconut oil. Or other tropical oils because they can really do a number on your cholesterol, okay? All right, now, butter versus margarine. We'll see about that. Super quick, but this is very, very important. I know some people think it's better to eat butter. Some people think it's better to eat margarine. Um, this is the thing. Butter has a lot or basically a high amount of saturated fat and trans fats. Not good for your cholesterol, okay? It, it can raise your LDL cholesterol, can raise your cholesterol. Butter, not a great choice. But <clears throat> when it comes to margarine, all margarines are not created equally. That's yeah. right. The harder the margarine is, harder meaning like in terms of, um, in terms of uh, uh, how hard it is, the harder the margarine, the less healthy it is when it comes to saturated fats and trans fats. So hard margarine has high amounts of saturated and trans fats as well. So it's similar to butter in that sense. So what do you go for, butter versus margarine? Well, you want to go for, if those are the two options you have, you want to go for margarine, but you want to avoid the hard margarine. Instead, go for liquid or soft tub margarine. Very important, that tends to be made with vegetable oils. So interesting, right? Guys, all of this information is courtesy of heart.org. That's the American Heart Association. Make sure you check out that website for more cooking ideas. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you liked it, if it was helpful. Let me know what you cook with. Share this video with other people. Your mom. I don't know if coconut family. oil is really other that bad. Who it depends on how much coconut oil you're having. Like if you're having like, you know, coconut curry every night then it might be a problem but if you're just having like a little bit of coconut oil every once in a while it's probably not not much of a problem i don't know we'll see because i'm gonna get my labs all done again in december so we'll see about that okay that tea is so delicious that um, maple syrup, freaking delicious.
How many? Oh, it's only seven minutes. Stop buying these 10 foods, easy money saving grocery ideas. Today, guys, I'm telling you Living to on stop a dime. buying these foods, please. Living I'm on a dime to grow so rich. so expensive, and this is what is driving your grocery bill sky high. Stop buying these foods now, and you will save thousands on your grocery bill every single year. Number one, snack cakes. Okay. I don't buy those. Everybody loves the little pre-packaged snack cake desserts. I get that, but guys... These are super, super expensive. Stop buying them. Just use the recipes from our Dining on a Dime cookbook or go to our website, livingonadime.com, and you can make your own homemade granola bars, your own coffee cakes, your own three ingredient donuts. And it does. I agree. I bake all my own stuff. Long. I'm a lazy, tired cook. I don't feel like spending a lot of time in the kitchen. So I try to make all my recipes quick and Too easy. Hot. Snack cakes is something you can make really super easy, just making muffins at home, and it doesn't cost you a lot of money. The next one is Gatorade. Yes, Gatorade is a huge waste of money. It's just glorified. Kool-Aid is all it is. I disagree there. When you have, when you have had like a very intense workout or you're out in the heat, Gatorade really quenches your thirst. But I don't suggest it for all the time, just during, like, uh, labor-intensive physical activity. When you work up a sweat, drink some Gatorade or anything with electrolytes like that. Um, you can always get those, like, Neo Fitness squeezes. That's a way to save money on the things with electrolytes. Um, or you can drink pickle juice. But anything with electrolytes, you're going to need, especially if you're going to have intense cardio workouts. It really is, guys. You can get electrolytes in a little bottle. Just make you up some flavored water, yeah. some Kool-Aid water, or just put some Kool-Aid in some water and add these electrolyte drops. It's literally pennies. We're talking like five cents for one serving. Maybe that, I agree. that much. Maybe just a couple of cents. But don't completely cut out electrolytes because you need them when you I have just cardio. Buy them by the bottle, put in the few drops that I need, and then I have my pre-made electrolytes. And I've saved a lot of money not buying Gatorade. Milk. Milk is not used for drinking in my house. I know gasps. Everyone just take a moment and gasp together. But I never have allowed my kids to drink milk ever. Occasionally I would give them chocolate milk or maybe hot cocoa. But they don't just sit down at a meal and drink a glass of milk. They just don't get thirsty and go get a glass of milk. Milk is used in cereal and baking in my house, and that is pretty much it. My kids do not get unlimited milk. No, drinking more milk is not going to give you more vitamins and minerals. Kids need a certain amount of milk servings every day between the yogurt and the cheeses and the milk that parents give them. They get way more than they need. What do we use instead? Water. My kids, if they're thirsty, they can get a glass of water. The same goes with juice. Juice is a treat in our house and not a staple. I only buy juice when it's on sale and then I limit my kids to one glass of juice when we get it a day. But my kids have never just had unlimited juice to drink. Once again, water, we never buy juice and probably have saved five to $600 at least on our grocery bill every year by not buying juice. Creep. I don't agree with just making them drink water. That's kind of unfair. I would probably give my kids the option of like, well, okay, so I agree with her, like one glass of milk a day, one glass of juice a day. That's That sounds reasonable. But there should always be some sort of like pitcher full of tea or like, Kool-Aid or some shit like that, a pitcher full of something for them to drink um, besides water. I don't think they should just only be able to have water. Prepackaged chips. Yes, this is another big one. Guys, it literally takes 20 seconds to put a handful of chips in a little baggie. Stop buying the pre-packaged chips. These are a huge waste of money. First of all, you don't need the chips in the first place. 
I agree Second with that. Second of all, if you do have chips, limit the amount of chips that you let your kids eat. My kids get one bag of chip chips a week. And once it's gone, I don't buy more. If they eat them all right away, then they're gone. But or lunches and stuff. I can instead eat. of chips, give them like healthy crackers that are like whole grain and stuff like that. Or like rice cakes or something like that package them into little baggies myself i have never ever 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 but i agree with pre-packaging them i probably saved hundreds on my grocery bill pre-cut fruits and vegetables this is another huge money waster for groceries Mm -hmm. guys it really takes two to five minutes to cut up your fruits and vegetables it does not take long at all it is not worth the extra expense to pay for cut up fruits and vegetables So stop wasting your money on these convenience foods. Fancy granola bars. Guys, I do buy the cheapy granola bars because all they are is a glue. I don't agree with feeding your kids granola bars either. Granola bars are... Granola bars, protein bars, I'm completely against those. The only time you really need those is after an intense workout. They should not be snacking on those just any time because it's basically a candy bar. There's so much um, sugar in it. They're just like a little bit healthier than a candy bar. And they should not be thinking, oh, I get to snack on candy bars all the time. So I wouldn't even give my kids granola bars. Maybe what I would do instead is give them a couple cookies because a couple cookies is going to be a lot less calories than a freaking granola bar or a protein bar. Yeah, just give them a couple like oatmeal cookies or a couple like chocolate chip cookies that you bake yourself so that you're saving money and you're not giving them like a full on freaking carb attack. Glorified cookie. I mean, you gotta admit, even the fancy protein and all the exactly she's bars saying that same. kind bars yeah. and all this other stuff, guys, they're just a glorified cookie is all they are. Mm-hmm. You don't need the expensive granola bars. Yeah, they taste good. I'm not going to tell you they don't taste good, but you can make the same thing at home for a quarter of the price. Stop buying things like the expensive granola bars instead if you're going hiking or whatever just make yourself a sandwich just make yourself a turkey sandwich and take it that would be a lot cheaper and a lot healthier bar and a lot healthier for you mm-hmm. yogurt cups and packets and all of that guys dining on a dime volume one has how to make yogurt dining on a dime volume two has how to make greek yogurt did you know you can make yogurt at home for a quarter of the price of buying it at the store you can and it's super, super easy and not time consuming at all. It's really super easy. But if you're gonna buy yogurt at the store, that's fine. Get the bigger tubs of yogurt and stop buying the little individual yogurt cups and yogurt type things. Guys, those are a huge waste of money, mm-hmm. huge waste of money. It's seven cents an ounce for regular yogurt and 14 cents an ounce for the little stick packets of yogurt and stuff. Guys, why are you paying double? You- I probably wouldn't even give my kids yogurt. I'd probably give them, like, kombucha. I wouldn't want my kids to get addicted to yogurt because most American yogurt is just loaded with sugar. And most of it isn't vegan either. You don't need to pay double. You really don't. Have the kids eat before you leave. Kids do not need to be having all of these snacks in the car all the time. When my mom was growing up, they never ate in the car. You didn't ever just drag water bottles and juice boxes and all this stuff all the time. If you're doing that, maybe you need to think about cutting back on some of the activities you're doing. Sorry, I know it's a little bit of tough love, but maybe you should cut back on some of those activities so you're not always running yourself ragged and you can be at home, eat, proper meals at home and then go out because all of these convenience mm-hmm. foods are just destroying your grocery bill before and I your body this one guys if you like these videos please give me a thumbs up it helps the algorithm to know sure. that you like these videos and it will show it to more people so we really appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed and hit that notification bell all right the next one is fancy breads I know I get a lot of flack when I say just bake them yourself. Thirty-four Walmart bread, but guys, really, 
it is not worth the cost to spend five dollars for a loaf versus a dollar 34 a loaf and it baking them yourself is way cheaper too expense. just stop eating so much food if you want to eat healthier okay just cut back on the amount of food you're eating I get the healthy bread, but if you're in debt or in hock up to your eyeballs, you need to be cutting back on your grocery bill. It is one place that you can cut back on. You can cut back on. And one of the ways is to stop buying your 12 grain, 12 nut loaf bread. Yeah, it's just really not worth it. If you guys need more ideas and tips on how to save money on your grocery bill, go watch this video next and check the links in the description below and visit us at livingonadime.com. We will see you guys next time. Cool, that was good information. All right, anything else interesting? Unlock the taste sensation of the gluten-free African vegan cottage something. Chef TJ, let's check this out. Cottage pie. So is that like a shepherd's pie? Or is it cottage pie? What do you think this is? Today we are making vegan cottage pie using what is called amatumbe in my language. As I've our seen those. It means substitute. But not only that, what makes it even more exciting is that I'm going to be showing you how Let's to make up. vegan parmesan cheese only using two ingredients. Guys, you don't, don't want to miss that. You use those. Amatumbe, also called taro in English. All you have to do is wash them thoroughly and then boil them until you can mash them, pop them in the oven. I guess you just use them kind of like overnight in a very very low heat you can also use a dehydrator if you have one i didn't have so i use the oven this is what you are looking for they have to look like this now let us make our vegan beef means mixture we have to start with our coloring make sure the color is right and also there is some beef flavor and he's so using them to make vegan beef. beef juice and of course we're gonna need a bit more and please do not forget one of my favorite ingredients, which is low sodium soy sauce. It just have to be low sodium soy sauce. You don't want a lot of salt in your system. And of course, some paprika. And of course, that artificial beef flavoring together with apple juice. Guys, I'm going to be telling you at the end of this video why apple juice. You don't want to miss that idea behind apple juice. Do not forget the liquid smoke <laughs> i use this one this particular one is not really really strong if you have a strong one you can put less than what i'm doing and then if you if you really really want the best out of this i suggest right now keep it in the fridge overnight and work on it the following day let us add some chickpeas we need some protein remember we are substituting beef means so we do need some protein let's just yeah what do you think of this idea guys please let me know in the comment section what do you think of this idea guys look at that look at that it's tasty <laughs> now you need to finally chop garlic pepper onion someone said to me i should never say red onion <laughs> it's always pepper anyway and also one white onion finely chopped one large carrot will do uh, at this point guys you can use celery sticks right i really wanted 
auxiliary to stick a cooling gate one, but you can use that, you can use herbs like thyme, you can use sage, you can use bell leaves, it's really up to you. A bit of oil, a bit of garlic, just a bit of stay. Remember, I'm using proper pot here, so it burns so fast. So almost immediately, I have to add my onions, and then in a few minutes, a few minutes, right? Because this thing is super, super, super fast. Then I have to add um, my carrots. There is nothing that I love more than using this particular product. I just love it. Besides that, it reminds me of my grandmother. It reminds me of the fairy tale she told her. It reminds me a lot of stuff. It is authentic. It, is, it just brings all that pumps. <laughs> look at look at that. What do you think? Of that? That looks look good. at that. By the way, I'm using tomato paste here. Uh, I really don't like the idea of using flour or cornstarch as your thickening agent, right? Mm. I always prefer this if I'm using if I'm making this particular recipe. And of course now we wanna add a bit of it's about 350 of your uh, tomato puree. <laughs> uh, whether you're getting the tinned one or you're blending the one at home, either way, it's still fine. So the color is not really like I hear, but as you simmer, uh, it will change, right? Because this will get thick and thick and thick. Look at that, guys. Just look at that. Doesn't that look like the means the beef means that you know? I like to add cocoa powder to things that I'm making taste like beef. I promise you that. That usually works good. Can't really care. This is your regular pinch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I like this mug. The only thing I don't like about this mug is like it's facing me. I would wish that it was on the other side. I don't drink with my left hand, I drink with my right hand, so I can't show off the cool logo. I have to keep it all to myself. As I promised, it's only two ingredients. That's Rice Krispies oh and Nutritional Yeast. Blend that together. You've got your vegan Parmesan cheese. That's it. Rice That's Krispies it. This is probably the best you can find um, in the internet. I promise you the flavor of this thing is just power. Yes, there's a bit of sugar, just a bit of sugar. But be Hmm, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. Rice Krispies and Parmesan cheese. I've got that. I've got Rice Krispies. I got, or not, Rice Krispies and nutritional yeast to make Parmesan cheese. I've got Rice Krispies. I've got nutritional yeast. I'm going to try it. Um, it'd be cool if I could, you know, cut back on how much um, cashew I'm using. But... You know, this cashew is pretty good too. But you can make, I think you can make it with any kind of nut, but I want to try making it with Rice Krispies because I bet that's a lot healthier. I don't know if it tastes any better. He says it tastes pretty good, so I'm going to try it. Because there is nutritional yeast, it just balances out and gives that cheese flavor guys <laughs> and here is our mesh i'm gonna be sharing <laughs> i'm gonna be sharing on my patreon account uh how to uh make these things in detail and if you do want to support uh, me on my patreon account that helps make all these recipes uh the link is in the description 
And by the way, guys, this recipe is also in my cookbook, which is out in two weeks or so. We're going to be doing pre-orders, I think, about next week. And guys, if you have not subscribed yet, this is the time where I suggest you subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't get to miss out next time when I post. Now, I'm let's hear what the guys all, the like have this to video. say about this recipe. I'm sure they won't believe this is Amadou there. That looks oh, pretty please good. comment yes if you've seen what I've shared about why I used that apple juice. Yeah, it basically looks like a shepherd's pie. What do you call it? Cottage pie. I think it's basically kind of the same thing, but Africanized. <laughs> So, Buba, I Well, that was interesting. I uh, learned something new about Parme vegan Parmesan that I'm eager to try. Okay, so. I want to show you the other thing that I got from Dollar General. I got this cute little Frankenstein squeeze toy for Khalid. I don't know. You might like it. <laughs> I thought it was really cute. Only a dollar, Dollar General. Uh, this is like $3. Man, that tea was good. I think that should be enough caffeine to keep me alert for the rest of the night and I don't think I'm gonna work out tomorrow. What workouts are there tomorrow anyways? Tomorrow I could do Tai Chi or water aerobics. I don't know if I want to do water aerobics. Um, maybe. I'll see how I feel tomorrow because I was pretty sore yesterday, and I'm not sure if I'm going to feel super sore tomorrow. Um, I think three workouts for my first week was good, but, you know, I can always push myself harder. <laughs> um, I think getting at least three workouts a week for the month of August is the goal. If I get more than three workouts a week, that's fine. But um, I'm not gonna push myself any. I'm not gonna push myself any harder than three. Or no, I'm not gonna like hold myself up to any more than three workouts a week. If I'm feeling good, feeling pumped, feeling energized, I can do more than three workouts a week. But I'm gonna just hold myself to three workouts a week for the month of August. And I think I'm gonna stick to mostly just aqua fitness and. TRX. TRX made me so sore. Oh my gosh. That was a good dinner. <laughs> oh my God, I want some more tea, but no, that's enough caffeine. I'm going to wake up early tomorrow. All right. Um, maybe I'll go to, oh, I should go to the Humane Society thrift store tomorrow. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll go to Albertsons get my ten dollars and then I'll go over to the Humane Society thrift store and then we can have another thrift haul and then I want to go to um uh Goodwill Sunday as well. Yeah. Um yeah. I think I'm done for the evening. I don't know when I'll get caught up on like uh tarot reading. That's definitely a goal. Tomorrow, I'm also going to do laundry. I got to do laundry tomorrow. So look forward to that in the evening. And then probably sometime next week, I'll try and get caught up with tarot reading. I think, let me check and see. I think I left off on Monday. So maybe we could just continue tarot reading the following Monday. That would be um, smart. Okay, let's see here. What's the last reading I did? Oh, 
I don't see Leo here. So maybe, yeah, I think I didn't do Leo yet. So Sunday, Sunday, I should get caught up by doing Leo and then just continue on with the week that I kind of skipped because of the time. So, um, yeah. So look forward Sunday to a Leo tarot reading and then we'll just get back on track. Um, all right. See y'all later. Bye.